Uh, I will just introduce him. He's, he's already had given us a lecture earlier. Captain Puneet, for over four decades of experience in various capacities as deck officer and graduating to masters, he has served in the capacity of a master on board tankers, crude oil, chemical tankers, and as a mooring master. Actively involved in conversion and commissioning of FSO, FESO worldwide. Is actively involved in vessel inspection, pre wetting, conducting audits on board. A freelance journalist participating actively on national TV debates. An entrepreneur with a passion to give back to the industry. He has a YouTube channel in the banner of Marine Quest Solutions. And he has broadcasted 49 videos on hydrodynamics, ship handling, and STS operations. Been writing a book dedicated to seafarers around the world, subject matter on what we see, you can't see, present assignment in hand. Conducting structured training, structured training and courses on hydro, hydrodynamics, ship handling. Conducting BTM courses at MTI various faculties. A few on few company panel on navigational assessment and mentoring, development, developing of STS courses, training of pilots. Welcome, Captain Puneet. It's all yours for today. Thank you very much, Captain Sasi, and thank you all of the guests presiding at this podium. And I thank you all for giving me this podium to talk about the subject matter. I uh have been, uh, you know, my credentials have been well apprised by Captain Sassi. Uh, we'll take from here onwards now to all the gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen presiding at this podium, to the importance of hydrodynamics and the ship handling. Now, what I have learned from good old days, and my comrades who are sitting over here will also pro probably complement this matter of fact, is that, you know, uh, Ship handling is something what we do, you know, read and we do learn it theoretically when we are doing our, you know, qualification of our grades, be it second mate, mate, master through that curriculum. However, when you talk about the practical aspects of the ship handling, it actually you learn it when you're sitting on the hot seat in various capacities, especially as master and or mooring master or, you know, different capacities in which I had the fortune enough to serve the industry. Thereafter, what I will try to do with the you know time I have been allotted uh, slotted over here, I will first try to give you give you a presentation on on uh, the aspects which, of course, I know is not a hidden lacuna to all the comrades who are here, over who are over here with me or with us. Uh, but yes, just to refurbish ourselves, and thereafter I'll follow up with a video presentation which i've made it uh, you know uh, which i'll be uploading later on on my youtube channel as well now uh, it is uh, the the video presentation is about an overtaking uh, overtaking situation in uh, in a narrow channel how does the hydrodynamical interactions work prior to that just you know getting ourselves a bit refurbished and uh, then uh, once the video is over i'll take you all guys question in concurrence Uh, Captain Sassi, since uh, you, you're the host, uh, is my screen I'm sharing, is is it, uh, can it be seen, sir? Very clear. Please go ahead. Uh, All right, sir. So the subject matter is importance of hydrodynamics and ship handling, part two. Part one, I had, uh, had the opportunity to, you know, uh, uh, come on the CMMI's platform a few months ago, and that's the reason I took it, uh, you know, a step up on the subject matter. Now, uh, what are the fact main factors which affect the vessel's maneuverability, ship handling with respect to the hydrodynamics? Of course, as I said, nothing is hidden lacuna, but we'll try to practice it to see practically how does it work. The resistance of the ship's hull through the water, bow waves, why they are positive, and stern waves, why they are negative. This I have explained, you know, in a in a very uh, descriptive manner in my on my YouTube channel that why bow waves are positive and why the pivot axis doesn't go 
beyond one third of the length of the bow of the ship means forward of it. That is because of the the, the resistance which has been experienced by the ship's hull and the bow waves, why they are positive, which also I had explained in my you know uh, channel, uh, where, where I've taken a hypothesis subject to, you know, if I have got a vessel, which I'll explain you in my diagrammatic presentation also, that if there's a vessel and if I hypothetically pick her up and if suppose hypothetically everything is stopped, water is stopped, flowing ships have stopped moving, and hypothetically I pick the vessel up and keep her on the table where you know we are sitting, what do we see? We see we see nothing but a hollow. That hollow is nothing but underwater volume of displacement. Now this is a magical thing, which works if we can understand the basic concept of it. So the water which is ingressing towards to fill up the the void is uh, you know ingressing in because of the steep gradient subject to the draft of the vessel what she's drawing and uh, because the water is trying to fill up so the bow waves are construed as positive and thereafter it's receding from stern or aft they are they are basically construed as negative the second point the water pressure exerted upon the ship's hull of course we have talked about it in a little bit because as i said subject to the time uh, hull shapes and design and we know Block coefficient plays a major role. For a vessels with a you know block coefficient more than 0.7, we have learned it in our, in our school days as well during the maritime curriculum that the during the uh, if the uh, block coefficient is more than 0.7, the vessel squats by head and uh, reciprocatively, if it is less than 0.7, the vessel may squat by stern. The vessels draft in relation to the available depth of water. Of course, we know that, you know, the squat uh, effect starts taking place or starts coming into play once the, the draft and depth ratio is one by two. That is, if you we have a draft of 10 meters and we are entering a water of 20 meters plus, even then the squat starts playing the, uh, the, the role uh, as far as the squatting of the vessel is concerned. Second is the change of density and the change of trim. Change of density, of course, is, uh, when we are going from a, high density water to a low density water or vice versa reciprocatively the there will be also you know change of trim and that's what is defined as i've explained in my next uh, line the internal distribution of weight and the cob cog that is where uh, where it intersects coming to the point where the change of density and the change of trim takes place the intersection of cob and cog is there and that's where the tipping x uh, edge takes place and the vessel trims accordingly besides uh, squatting Vessels trim, list, heel, hog, and sag. Of course, that also is a matter of concern for bigger vessels. The the like VLCCs, what I've commanded, the hog uh, or the uh, the sag basically in particular goes up to around around 10, 15, sometimes you know 20 odd centimeters. That is in worst case scenario when the stresses are high. Vessels list and healing effect, of course, that also plays a role in the underwater volume of displacement. In case the vessel is not upright, healing or trimming, uh, healing or listing, then that much un extra underwater volume of displacement also has to be accrued for. The height of tide, tide above the datum, that is the currents, the ebb and flooding. Now, that is where I have a, you know, I will explain. Like, for, in for instance, when we go alongside a berth, in a in a river especially we always get a you know a prompt from from the you know the pilot the terminal the port control that okay captain please be careful the tide is going to ebb from you know this time to this time synoptic basis but we never hear anybody talking about captain please be careful under the same circumstances same scenario that the tide is going to flood so please be careful and do tend to a gangway and moorings that also has got a hydrodynamical effect because uh coming from that perspective if we talk about let's let's say uh, you know a uh, river like hoogly or or uh, let's say uh mississippi river where the the you know the the gradient of tide may go up to around 15 or 20 feet approximately it does surge quite a bit the water which is coming from north, let's say the water which is coming from north, from where the river is flowing through the from the mountains where the ice is melting and the river is flowing con constantly, and it is flowing, let's say, from north to south. When the datum at on the you know on the sea, uh, the place where this the at the mouth of the river, 
when the datum becomes less, that means the, the sea water level has reduced, the velocity increases and the pressure reduces. That is, of course, with the Venturi effect and, you know, Bernoulli's theorem as well. So that's where I've explained for that. I've broadcast a separate lecture on how does the ebb and flooding works and plays a major role in ship handling as well as on the uh, hydrodynamics. One minute. I'll just go down to the next slide. The other thing is the pivot axis or pivot point, uh, which is a virtual uh, point and moves along the ship's center line. And when the vessel is stopped, that is in line uh, in line with the intersection of center of flotation and center of buoyancy. That is when the vessel is stopped. Going ahead, of course, we all know it goes one third of the length from the bow and uh, stern one third, of, one third of the length from the stern. We all are aware of it. Thereafter, the prevailing weather conditions, sea swells, and the windage area, which also plays a major role in in conjunction with the with the hydrodynamics. Now, the last but not the least, the vessel's displacement and underwater volume of displacement, which actually works in a very magical manner when we talk about you know the 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 ship handling, especially in the restricted waters. We may not realize this aspect in the open sea or in open waters, but we do certainly, you know, come across this aspect in the restricted waters and or the narrow channels, which I have already described at length in my video, which I will be showing it in due course. So I'm just trying to basically, you know, just... Uh, uh, refurbish or brush up all of us, of course, with due respect to all of us. The vessel's main engine steering capabilities, of course, and the tra transverse thrust. Like, for instance, I had been, uh, uh, you know, OM and mooring master at a few places where I had to uh, handle, uh, you know, left-hand twin screw, FPSO, which was a disconnectable. This was at... Uh, uh, of Philippines in uh, Palawan uh, at Shell Malampaya oil field, where because of storm coming during this time, this period of time from this month of September till uh, approximately January, you I had to disconnect the vessel every now and then. And trust me, when you're handling a left hand twin screw, uh, especially a Suez Max or an Afra Max size FPSO, it, it makes a lot of difference in our ship handling. Uh, you know, techniques or capabilities, uh, and of course, our skills as well. The effect of squat and the UKC, this, uh, of course, I have, you know, we all are aware of it, the factors which are uh, associated with the squat uh, calculation, uh, as far as the UKC is concerned, of course, to begin with it, it's a block coefficient, thereafter, the C swell, whether this, uh, the, high, the height of tide uh, and the sea swell, if it is on the rise, then what happens that, of course, we are on the crest. And when it goes down, we are on the trough. So we'll have to take additional uh, you know, safety margin than that. Just for your kind information, I've already you know, explained this in my channel at length. And then comes the banking and cushioning effect, which is part and parcel of the video, which I'll explain uh, how does the banking cushioning or banking or the venturi effect which take place when the overtaking is taking place between two vessels in a in a in a narrow channel and the venturi effect as we speak it is the velocity of the fluid passing through a constricted area which will in, uh, increase along uh, the velocity will increase and which will be you know subjugated with a decrease in the pressure Next, I've shown a little diagrammatic presentation, which will be replicated in my video as well. The bow waves, they're positive. Of course, we can talk about when we have a question answer session. I'll be try, I'll try to do the justice to explain all of us. And it is a similar situation what I had, uh, I was talking about a few minutes ago regarding the, you know, in a river, uh, the upstream and downstream and uh, how does it work? Why? 
Uh, we don't get a kind of a prompt or a word of caution from the port authorities or the pilot during the ebbing of the tide. And uh, why do we get the, you know, the prompt only during the ebb of the ebbing of the tide, but we do not get the prompt during the flooding of the tide. Uh, here onwards, I will now, because of the time constraints have been given, I will now uh, switch over to my video. It is about 23 minutes video approximately. Please do have a look at it. And thereafter, please ask me whatever you wish to, and I'll try to do with my little aptitude and uh, do the justice if I can. Okay, just to have a word of, uh, you know, a uh, 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 sort of a concurrence that we are on the same page. Uh, Captain uh, Sasi, can you see my this uh, presentation? Lecture number 50, Importance of Hydrodynamics and Ship Handling Part 2, sir? Yeah, 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 we can see you. You're pretty good. So I will play the video now, sir. Please, please, please. If, please, if please, all please. of us can see, then I'll play the video, sir. Sure, sure. Do let me know uh, if uh, audio video is clear, sir. Today's subject matter under lecture number 50 is regarding the importance of hydrodynamics in ship handling part 2. I had already broadcast part 1 in my 49th lecture. Today as we proceed, we are going to talk about with respect to rule number 13, especially in an overtaking situation, how does the hydrodynamical forces and hydrodynamical interactions they affect the ship, especially when so there the is a narrow channel. Yeah, and our our is very is very 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 to explain this thing in a much more, you know, perhaps elaborate way. Huh? Huh? I've taken huh? Huh? Ah, okay, okay, anyway. Chai again? Not extreme size, but different uh, sizes no? of ship. There's one ship which is VLCC. She's laden, proceeding towards in the narrow channel and this is north upstream and south downstream so she is proceeding up north there's another vessel which is a mid-sized tanker which is also proceeding up north and uh, what we see is this just to have a contrast of two different sizes of vessels that's the reason i've taken a vlcc and a mid-sized tanker now to go from a chronological order, I will go slide by slide to make us understand what actually is happening, especially in an overtaking situation when a mid-sized tanker, which is also partially laden or let's say laden, is trying to overtake a laden, fully laden VLCC. What actually is happening, we will see when we go down the slides. First, let's you know, try to understand the whole thing from the uh, nomenclature point of view that, of course, this is a VLCC. She's on a, she has got a course over ground. I have taken course over ground to basically, you know, try to understand how the vessels are behaving. That's the reason I've not taken the gyro heading. So the course over ground for a VLCC is 000 degrees true and speed 10 knots. The course over ground of a mid-sized tanker is 002 degrees true and speed 15 knots. Now, this, as I said earlier, this is an overtaking situation by rule number 13 in a narrow channel. And as I already had, uh, you know, uh, spoken earlier that this is north upstream and this is south downstream. So the river is flowing from uh, north to south and the vessels are proceeding up north towards their destination. Slide number two, we see that uh, first and foremost, the slide number one, we see that the distance between a VLC, the VLCC and the mid-sized tanker is more than one ship's length. Now, when I'm trying to stress upon this point, what I'm trying to reflect upon that, of course, in a narrow channel fairway, we do not have sufficient sea room. But as far as practicable, when you have a different sizes of you know vessels and the overtaking situation takes place, it is recommended and advisable to keep at least one ship's length distance of a big vessel that is if the vlcc which has got a you know loa of 330 odd meters and a midship size tanker has got 183 odd meters then at least 
350 or 360 meters of clearance shall be maintained to reduce the effect of hydrodynamics and the suction effect. When I say suction effect, why the suction effect is basically getting so pronounced is because the VLCC is when she's fully laden, she has got a very high, uh, you know, uh, quantum of underwater volume of displacement because of her size, draft, depth, and the uh, displacement. And uh, here I'm trying to talk about in contrast with the underwater volume of displacement. Whereas uh, the midship size tanker, she is small, 183 meters long, laden. She has got a smaller underwater volume of displacement. So it is recommended and it is advisable by the therm rule to maintain at least one ship's length away from the bigger vessel whenever you are in an overtaking situation. If not, then we see what is happening. So overtaking situation, rule number 13, narrow channel, and this is how it is. The course over ground of a VLCC is 0, 0, 0, 10 knots and for a mid-sized tanker 0, 0, 0, 15 knots. Slide number 2, what we see. The course for a VLCC, she is steady. Of course, we know why bow waves are positive and stern waves are negative is because, again, this I have reflected also, explained this in at length in my, you know, YouTube lectures as well, uh, why they are positive, bow waves are positive and stern waves are negative. So, right now, I am going to stick to the subject matter of the hydrodynamics interaction uh, in an overtaking situation. So now, due to the bigger underwater volume of displacement of the VLCC, which is still staring 000 degrees uh, true course in 10 knots, the mid-sized tanker vessel is experiencing a lateral drag towards the VLCC due to the suction effect. Now here we see that the distance with respect to the previous slide, what I would shown the distance is more than one ship's length of a VLCC. The distance here between the VLCC and the mid-sized tanker ha is reducing gradually and because of that the effect of su suction or the suction effect hydrodynamically is enhancing. Why? Because the underwater volume of displacement of the VLCC is much bigger with respect to the mid-sized tanker. So, because when the vessel is moving, she is displacing that much water. Now, the gradient between the VLCC and mid-sized tanker is very big. So, there is a big gradient because of which the suction effect is taking place and the mid-sized tanker is eventually getting dragged towards the VLCC, which we'll see in our next slide how it is happening. So, now slide number three. Uh, it's the uh, same course and speed for a VLCC, but we see course over ground of the mid-sized tanker is approximately, say, 355 degrees true. Why? Because what is happening? Because of the suction effect, the mid-sized tanker is getting laterally drawn towards the VLCC because of her bigger underwater volume of displacement. Therefore, you know, uh, culminating or in result, it is having a suction effect because of which the mid-sized tanker is getting dragged towards the VLCC. So, the lateral drag due to the suction effect, what I just mentioned, and experiencing sluggish steering, yaw, and hunting of gyro due to the suction effect. So, what will happen that, uh, you know, uh, the mid-sized tanker is doing 15 knots. The VLCC is steady on, on uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10 knots. But what is happening? The water which is going to displace the underwater volume of displacement of a VLCC is constant. The constant means because she is on a constant speed and her displacement is also constant. However, the mid-sized tanker, her speed is more than the uh, VLCC because she is overtaking her. Basis which what is happening is that the water or the vacuum or the underwater volume of displacement or if I call it void is not getting sufficient time to get it filled up or to get it replenished. Because of this, there is an enhancement as far as the suction effect is concerned between both the vessels as far as the hydrodynamical interactions are concerned. 
So I'll repeat this thing again that lateral drive due to the suction effect and experiencing sluggage, stirring and yaw and hunting of gyro due to the suction effect. The hunting of gyro may also be experienced when you are in the very close proximity or you are coming into the a wider effect of a suction effect of a VLCC. Slide next slide number four. Now because of this, now with respect to the previous slide, she is still further away. Now she is, you know, almost come beyond the, uh, you know, past the quarter of a VLCC that is the mid-size tanker. Now see what is happening. The venturi effect is taking place. One is a suction, second is the venturi effect because of the constriction between both the vessels. The constriction which is taking place because the they are coming closer. The mid-size tanker is getting drawn towards the VLCC. So venturi effect, the velocity of the fluid, as we know the, by the definition of it, what it is, the velocity of the fluid passing through a constricted area will increase with decrease in pressure. So the velocity of the water which is passing in this constricted area is has increased with the reduction in the pressure. Why? Because of the suction effect. Why? Because the underwater volume of displacement of a VLCC is bigger, bigger quantum, which is not getting replenished as far as, as, far as it should have been in an open sea condition. And that is the reason why this venturi effect and the suction effect is predominant as far as in a narrow channel or a con restricted water is concerned and that's the reason like you know and because of that because of suction effect one is the squat is there uh, 2 cb uh, cbv square by 100 that is 2 cbv square by 100 on a in a uh, restricted waters but it gets more pronounced because of the you know the block under which the vessels both the vessels are you know traversing and because of that, because of this particular effect, the squat also increases. One is because of the speed, second is because the water which is not getting replenished as far as the underwater volume of displacement is concerned. So there may be increase in the squat experienced by both the vessels. And remember, it is directly proportional to more the speed, like in case of the mid-size tanker, the speed is more 15 knots. More the speed, more the effect, especially when you are in the close proximity of a bigger vessel. In this case, <coughs> the mid-size tanker is in closest proximity of a VLCC when the distance is less than one ship's length of a VLCC which I had also discussed in my previous session. So I repeat myself, venturi effect velocity of the fluid passing through a constricted area will increase with decrease in pressure. The course over ground of a VLCC is still constant, but the course over ground of a mid-sized tanker, she is wobbling port starboard, port starboard, yawing port starboard, and there will be also a surge. There will also be a surging effect. So what I discussed uh, Earlier, same thing has been written over here. The higher the speed, more the yaw and more the surge, respectively. And the suction effect from VLCC is dependent upon the width of the channel and the speed of both the vessels. Because if the width of the channel is further constricted, the effect will be more pronounced, you know, exponentially. So, we come to the next slide. Now, in this case... The mid-sized tanker is almost like, you know, her bow or the pivot axis all has already crossed, uh, you know, almost the quarter of the or the stern of the VLCC, almost coming to the midship length of a VLCC. And because of that, still she is wobbling. She is still making a course over ground of 355 before it was 003. So she will be basically, you will experiencing, uh, you'll be ex experiencing the wobbling of the vessel. And that's where one has to be cautious and to exercise due diligence and prudence towards the safety of navigation as we speak. So the constricted water with a high velocity and low pressure plus suction effect 
due to the difference in the underwater volume of displacement now the mantra is the difference in the underwater volume of displacement because of which the whole thing is taking place because the underwater volume of displacement of a vlcc is yeah, vlcc is very big compared to the mid-sized tanker and that is the reason the water which is because she's also moving forward and as per the archimedes principle she has to displace the equal amount of water what she's uh, uh, with respect to her displacement or weight but that water is not getting displaced so fast because one because of the restricted waters number two the vlcc is drawing more so underwater volume of the, dis the displacement is playing a major role in this particular case and the effect is getting pronounced by and large one is the drag or the suction effect which is experience which is being experienced by the mid-size tanker and number two your surge and number three the squat effect will also be there here i'm just talking about the lateral uh, drag towards the vlcc but with the purview of this particular session since the time is limited so i will talk about in this next session once i'm given the podium however here we are talking about how the mid-size tanker is getting dragged towards the bigger vessel so the constricted waters with the veloc high velocity and low pressure plus suction effect due to difference in the underwater volume of displacement and that's the reason the course over ground of the mid-size tanker is wobbling from 003 to 355 could be anything this is just a figure i've given just to basically <coughs> excuse me demonstrate and depict that what sort of effect how does the hydrodynamical effect in a restricted water in this kind of proximity is basically a game, game changer if we are not exercising due diligence and exercising prudence towards the safety of navigation. Now, greater the speed, more the time it takes to fill the void. Void, what I'm saying, is the underwater volume of displacement especially in restricted waters and enhances the effect of squat on both the vessels reciprocatively now going to the next slide now again in the overtaking situation this uh, mid-size tanker is already proceeding ahead because he's doing 15 knots course over ground of uh, vlcc is uh, still zero 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 ten knots and the constriction or suction effect increases due to close, close proximity of the uh, both the vessels as we see this uh, with the green line what i've shown or depicted here the low low pressure and high velocity of water which is passing through between both the vessels and that's where one has to be very careful this is a kind of a bit uh, quite a bit of dangerous situation so the thing what i'm trying to put forward is that you know whenever an overtaking is taking place in a restricted waterways how does the hydrodynamical effect is taking place of course with the bow and stern waves how they are behaving and end of the day because of so many restriction and uh, the bigger vessel drawing more draft and underwater volume of displacement of course with respect to a displacement how the suction effect is taking place on a smaller vessel so let's go to the next slide when the overtaking is you know it's it's underway so in this case again the suction and the venturi effect is taking place again here the pressure is high but here the velocity increases as the constriction takes place and because of that the buffer reduces because the pressure is reducing if we take it as a pipeline if i draw this as a pipeline the the velocity of the water passing between both the vessels in this sort of situation has increased with reduction in the pressure because of the venturi effect so overtaking situation okay that is what we are and suction uh, venturi effect is taking place at this point in time her course over ground is 008 now this is what i have just depicted based upon you know what i have experienced uh, myself in a narrow channel fairway how does it basically you know interact how does the water how does the vessels interact of course i never went so close definitely not nevertheless this was my you know uh, thought process to put it forward to all the mariners if it could be of some assistance to them the course over ground i have just you know uh, at random put at 008 could be 005 006 003 004 it could be anything because it is happening at different stages and it is happening you know uh, 
synchronously many a times we do not realize we do not realize because it's like when we go to a doctor first thing he looks for the you know the symptoms before he comes to the ratification of the disease so these are the kind of symptoms that when we know that of course one is a visual thing what we see but when we see all these things either vibration hunting of gyro or sudden you know uh, sort of uh, uh, staggering or a kind of a uh, you know galloping effect or a surge we know that there is something which is not right especially in this kind of situation and of course none of us would want to, uh, would want to be ever in this sort of situation where it's too too close maybe a near miss coming to the next slide now in this case this vessel has already you know passed up to she's come up to approximate pivot axis of the VLCC that's where because she has got more speed but still still the bigger vessel because of the suction effect you may experience it you may experience let's say hypothetically if your speed is constant 50 knots that is the speed over ground taking this hypothesis you will experience the reduction in speed because of the suction effect of the VLCC which is affecting the maneuverability of the mid-size tanker so that is the reason I've seen I've written here drag on the mid-size vessel followed by reduction of speed and maybe perhaps the vibrations or you may find your tachometer on the engine room side is all, size is also like hunting a bit why because the bigger ship is still drawing the same draft and her underwater volume of displacement is bigger and now the mid-size tanker is approximately here she is trying to go pull pull ahead you know go forward to get away from the suction effect of the VLCC but it will still remain till such time the mid-size tanker is approximately or more than one ship's length away from the VLCC the effect will still prevail even after once you're more than one ship's length That's the minimum criteria even when you're more than one ship's length away from the VLCC the effect will still prevail But it will be reduced Drastically to such an extent that you may not experience You know all these effects once you're more than one ship's length of a bigger vessel in this case the VLCC during this overtaking process, the VLCC will also experience vibration as well as effect of squat, which I narrated earlier, due to canal width and the depth of the water, which we talked about how it may affect the squat of the VLCC also because constricted water, uh, restricted waterways and the constriction is taking place. And in a small block, if I take this as a small block, this particular area, that is what I'm trying to show with my pointer in this small block there is a big restriction because the water is not getting sufficient time to fill up the void especially of a VLCC and thereafter the mid-size tanker because remember hypothetically speaking which I have explained in my previous lectures as well if I pick up this VLCC and keep it on the table hypothetically when the water everything has stopped And I, when I pick up this, this vessel, you will see a void, a hollow, which is nothing but underwater volume of displacement, which is bigger. And at this point in time, the VLCC, during the whole process of this overtaking, has got a bigger void. Till such time, the void of a VLCC is getting filled up and it is equal to, more or less equal to the void or underwater volume of displacement of a mid-sized tanker this effect will be ha will, will be experienced by the smaller vessel or a mid-sized vessel but remember in this particular case they are not static they're dynamic so this is happening concurrently synchronously in such a manner that many a times we do not realize that so ladies and gentlemen uh, I have tried to basically you know explain the subject matter effect that how does the hydrodynamical effect gets more pronounced in a in a restricted waterways now just to show you a simulation let me run the slide from the beginning this is the place where it is more than one ship's length and then see how it is happening how the ships are behaving till such time she's finally passed in clear i thank you all for giving me this podium 
and thank you very much i hope it would have been of some help to the mariners thank you good day bye bye hello hello sir i can't hear you apunit are you there yes sir i'm here ah uh, okay uh, uh, can we take some questions from the uh, yes, members yes, please sir. yes sir uh, yes can you put your uh, yes yes yes, yes. Vi video on please I'll, yes yeah, i cut you. off my audio video just to not have disturbance while the video was being played sir yeah so i will leave it open to the members to yes, ask sir. any questions uh, from uh, punit malhotra right sir yeah gentlemen i i i hope i have been uh, you know bit uh, like what have i express uh, i have been expressive enough to explain the subject matter nevertheless uh, if there are a few things i certainly would like to uh, you know get it because none of us is a walking encyclopedia uh, captain kiran uh, you have any question captain irkane sir can you any question yes, from sir. your side yes sir yes sir uh, uh, sir okay. uh, you have uh, explained it very nicely in a very lucid manner uh, this is a topic of uh, uh, interest for all of us uh, just can you confirm this uh, when the vessel is going astern the pivot point is 1 by 4 uh, times the length or 1 1/3 of the length sir it's by experience like you know we have uh, seen in the books and all that when i say that like you know i'll tell you uh, let's say when we are approaching an anchorage sir okay and uh, we are stemming into the tide and when we give the stern thrust by the you know practical knowledge of the seamanship when we find the water has come up to the bridge wing which is approximately one third maybe one fourth length little bit up and down can be so that is where i have gauged that it's approximately one third length from the stern because good old days when we did not have the gps we uh, you know did not could not ascertain uh, the speed over ground for stopping the vessel this was only practical way to basically assess whether the vessel has stopped or not so when we have given a stern thrust maybe dead slow stern slow stern or half a stern subject to the speed ahead you have and when the vessel has stopped and she's uh, steady on a heading before she starts canting to a starboard a right hand screw and when you find the water is evenly coming or the wake is coming evenly towards approximately in the vicinity of the bridge wing you know the vessel has stopped sir so uh, i have construed this from that uh, that point of view sir yeah got it sir got it thank you thank you uh good evening sir i'm captain joshi good evening uh, i would like to know about uh, if you could uh, please uh, uh, explain about the vlcc a uh, laden vlcc and a suez max tanker alongside and uh, how do they behave uh, uh, their hydrodynamics sir uh, that's a very good question you ask me because uh, still i do sometimes sts ops uh now which is the mother vessel in your point in view number one i'll ask you a few questions before i could answer is it a static maneuver that is the mother vessel is at anchor or uh, is it a dynamic dynamic maneuver uh, sir underway is ts and uh, the mother Running vessel i mean the vessel which is uh, vlcc is the uh, receiving vessel the service vessel is a suez max oh, i have been you, doing you such operations i have done in the west africa yes and, sir and uh, it was to be a very big challenge uh, because the, the it's no more a ship ship and both the vessels uh, make, make a big uh, size and it's a sort of a oblong uh, shape so that's how i would like to know okay uh just for information uh, sir what's your name i'm sorry could you specify your uh, name again probably i missed out sir captain kiran joshi captain kiran sir uh, thanks for asking me this question see sir the thing is that you're saying the the mother vessel is the swiss max tanker and a vlcc comes alongside uh in a opposite in a running way. opposite way sir oh you're saying vlcc is the mother vessel yeah yes sir okay because i i thought the other way around okay then it's okay because see what happens i have uh, i do uh, conduct sts lectures also so what i would do 
what i would do i uh, you can see in my uh, lecture number 2021 on, on on youtube i've explained everything thoroughly but nevertheless since you asked me i don't know if you can see my hand or not if you want i can draw it whichever is convenient to you if this is your vlcc you are on board a uh, suez max is coming there are different approaches few mooring master may bring her like this few mooring master may try to come from, from a stern what i would do is i would bring her from an angle of 45 degrees to her quarter uh, sir i think uh, my question is uh, not put up properly or something i am saying both the vessels are already made fast okay. and that time uh, how uh, the uh, behavior and the uh, hydrodynamics both the vessels are already made fast and then i am now maneuvering a vlcc let on vlcc almost uh, 20 meters draft and that time uh, the hydrodynamics okay that time what is happening sir number 1 uh you would be having of course uh, since you are an experienced master you would not be heading into the wind i'm just starting from the windage area you would not be coming into the uh, heading into the wind because we don't want the v to get prolonged sir number one number two at that point in time there is a suction effect which has taken place from the hydrodynamical point of view because you see you are on a vlcc she is laden and swayz max probably she's in ballast i'm taking that she's in ballast now what is happening when the vlcc is discharging she is coming up her freeboard is increasing whereas the suez max is coming down sir correct there will be an intersection of underwater volume of displacement of vlcc and a suez max once you have completed the transshipment probably i think you may agree with me that many a times suppose if you don't have a tug of course when you're doing the running and move it is taken for granted that you're doing in the you know uh, eez or uh, you know uh, in deep waters at that point in time you may experience that you sometimes find it difficult to disconnect the vessels because of the suction effect i've explained this everything in my lecture number 20 and 21 i've drawn it also so what is happening just to in a nutshell you are on a vlcc she was here suez max was here freeboard wise now vlcc is going up because she is discharging suez max is going down because she is loading so there will be an intersection of underwater volume of displacement which uh, connects both the vessel like a magnet hydrodynamic laser hello right sir thank you Uh, got uh, the gist of it no no uh, i i'll tell you i'll tell you i'm not trying to i'm not trying to promote my channel please do not get me wrong i'm doing all these things like up to now i will be uploading 50 lectures this is free for everybody this is just to impart the i'm not saying the legacy but on hand experience sir i've explained this everything drawn on the board how does the underwater volume of displacement interact with each other and they go like a magnet and how to disconnect it how to use the transfer thrust of a bigger vessel vlcc to break this vacuum sir i have explained everything in a much detailed manner you you may have my number you can contact me i'll be able to draw it and ex explain it to you at length right sir my, thank you my each lecture is made maybe around 35 40 odd minutes i think uh, you would be able to understand if not please do let me know sir i'll try to do whatever best i can sir Yeah, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Sir, I cannot hear you, sir. Captain Sasi, I can't hear you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, jo Joshi, for the uh, very interesting question that you put up. Uh, the further clarification, definitely, I'll try to get uh, some videos and pass it across to you. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to ask some questions, please? Shrikant Limia sir No I don't have any questions uh, uh thank you very much uh then I think uh, I will go through the uh, vote of thanks firstly let me thank the senior members who have, of the fraternity who was who come here today I would like to thank captain Puneet Malhotra to give us an insight into importance of hydrodynamics in ship handling of course he has done this uh, uh, lecture earlier also uh, but explain it uh, you know well thank you punit i would thank like you, to sir. thank the media 
uh, who has you know covered the event today that is Marek Sijob, Bandarakar News, Sailor Today, Saga Sandesh and a special thanks to Sailor Today whose YouTube is actually live. <laughs> Extend my big thanks to the office bearers that is Captain Ja, Pradhan, Captain Basin and Gyanadar Singh for their support. Also our office manager Mr. Sudhir Palka for the back-end support and I would personally like to thank each one of you who have come up uh, to make this uh, lecture you know, very interesting. And uh, thank you once again to Captain uh, Hirkane, sir, and my dear friend Joshi <laughs> for you know, making it even more interesting. You know, when you interact, always the session is really good. Thank you, uh, Puneet, and have thank a good you, evening, sir. sir. If thank some so other much. questions are there, I'll take it. But thank you very much, sir. And thank you, Captain Kiran, for asking such an interesting question. I, I feel obligated, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you all. And uh, all the best. Thank you much. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye.